Hey everyone, my name is Sudar and I'm a medical intern here in India. Currently, I've given my US Assembly Step 1 exam and I've passed it. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about all the self assessments that are available for a US Assembly Step 1 exam and why you should take them all. Okay, so these are all the self assessments uh, out there for the US Assembly Step 1 exam. Uh, I took them all. And I will tell you why you should take them all as well. Also, don't get confused with the numbering system that I've used. I've numbered the exams in the order that I took them. It wasn't tactical or anything, but just something that I found okay and went with. But mainly not to uh, waste too much of my time on obsessing over which assessment should I be taking first and which I should be taking later on. Okay, so the first self-assessment that I took was the uh, U-World self-assessment uh, which is called the UWSA-1 and I failed that one really bad. I think it was 4 months away from my uh, exam date and I had barely solved any U-World questions and I realized that I had no practice uh, solving any questions and I didn't even know how to pace myself during the exam. So this self-assessment was a much needed eye-opener and I decided to solve more and more questions and also try and prepare a strategy on how to pace myself during the exam so that I don't exhaust myself towards the last block of the exam. I'm not gonna lie that I did feel bad about failing this self-assessment uh, but after a few days uh, I think I got my motivation back to fight this exam. It was difficult because I had spent the last three months uh, doing my first pass of the material that I needed to study and this self-assessment just made me feel like I knew nothing but when I was reviewing the questions uh, I realized that I had made many silly errors and I could have passed easily in the exam if I had more uh, question solving practice and that's what I did, I solved more questions. The next assessment I took was the AMBOSS free self-assessment test for the US Emily Step 1 exam. Uh, from the name you can figure it out that it was a free assessment for all so that's why I took it and I thought it would be a good idea to check my progress after uh, 30 days of question solving. This assessment has uh, 4 blocks of, qu of 40 questions each and I scored around 63% uh, correct on an average in each block and this uh, matched to a score of around 216 which is a pass. I was happy that I passed this exam but uh, I was still a little bit scared because uh, it wasn't by a lot. But now I've seen that uh, following the question solving method and learning from the explanations was working well for me. So I continue to solve more new world questions and learn from them more. After this assessment, I think I solved around 1500 questions from uh, U World and gave the UWSA2, which is the U World self assessment uh, 2. I passed this one as well and I got a score of 230 which is a good score for only having solved uh, less than half the Q-Bank of U-World. This was a good confidence boost and a much needed one as well. I found the UW essays to be more specific in the answers that were expected. By that I mean that in most of the questions there was one clear cut answer that was the right answer. And this was not like the actual US Emily Step 1 exam where I felt like there were more than one correct answers and I had to choose the one that is the most correct for that specific question. After having solved my first pass of UWorld is when I decided to start solving the NBMEs. NBMEs are some of the most important self-assessments for the US ME Step 1 exam and this is because they are made from the same board that conducts the US ME Step 1 exam. I would recommend not missing out on any of these forms that are present during your time. And as far as I can recall, I think around 5 questions were directly asked from the NBMEs in my US Emily Step 1 exam. And I am so glad that I had solved it before because I could uh, secure those points easily and I didn't waste much time on those questions as well. If the same thing happens for you, those are like easy points in the bag for you. Some people try to follow a particular sequence in which you should take the NBMEs. But I did no such thing because I didn't want to obsess uh, over a sequence and waste my time over determining which is the perfect sequence. So I just started with the NBME 25 and moved upwards. Uh, the higher you go, the more predictive it gets 
and the latest and the amis are the ones that represent the US Emily Step 1 exam more. Okay, so let's talk about the form number 25. I think this is one of the most difficult forms present at the moment. Uh, the questions that are asked are very specific and they are on small details that are not uh, very high yield. I would even go for, uh, ahead and say that uh, many of them were low yield material. So it was like if you know it, you know it. If you don't know it, you don't know it. It represents more like the previous US Assembly Step 1 exam. So don't try to fixate on the percentage of correct uh, questions that you get. Just try to learn more from the exam and move ahead with it. I got an 80% chance of passing on this exam and weirdly the new NVMEs don't give you a score. So you just get a passing percentage and uh, so I think it was okay. The next was the NVMe 26 and it felt okay except for a couple of blocks which made me feel uh, like what the hell was this exam. But I think I had a similar feeling uh, after I gave the actual USMLE step 1 exam. So I think this exam was a good practice for the actual uh, USMLE step 1. I think I did okay with a 95% chance of passing and I learned all the wrong questions from this NBME and moved on to the next one. NBME 27 was a little difficult one and at this point in my prep I didn't have much material to go on but on, at the same time I felt like I had a lot of things to study and I think this was mainly because I got a 96% chance of passing. This was only a mild improvement from the previous NBME but it kept me motivated to study more. Most of the questions on this form were uh, very short and expected answers from facts whereas the real exam didn't have many questions like this one. The information from these uh, questions could help solve some of the experimental questions in the actual USMLE Step 1 exam. So I recommend that you study the information that is given in the explanations. The next one was the NBME 28. And I felt it was a little vague and I felt so confused uh, during many questions throughout the exam. But what I learned during the exam was that I tried to focus on the question that was in front of me and answer it to the best of my abilities. This is something that I had to use even during the actual US Assembly Step 1 exam and to be able to forget the previous question and just focus on the question that is in front of me. Don't let one bad question ruin the rest of your exam. Uh, there are more chances that the bad question was probably an experimental question. On this exam, I got a 98% chance of passing and I was super happy mainly because I thought I had done bad on this exam and I was going to see a drop in my uh, chances of passing. But that wasn't the case and in fact it improved. So I was happy with it. The next was the NBME 29 and I felt like NBME 29 had uh, good quality questions. By this I mean that uh, the questions were more like the U word question with a longer stem and uh, they were actually focusing more on the application part of the knowledge. It did have many factual type questions to test your knowledge but again most of them were from the high yield materials so that was important. Many similar type of questions were present on the USMLE Step 1 exam and uh, I would say this is a must do exam for anyone giving the USMLE Step 1. The next were the NBME 30 and 31 and these are said to be the most representative of the USMLE Step 1 exam and I agree with it. Most of the questions on this form were based on critical thinking and analyzing the questions. Many of them were second order and third order questions which are one of the favorite questions uh, asked on the USMLE Sub 1 exam. Both of these forms were a good practice for the actual exam and definitely a must do exam before the USMLE Sub 1. I got 99% pass of passing on both of these exams and I was super happy with it because 99% uh, is the highest that you can achieve in the NBMEs. It made me believe that I was actually ready to take the USMLE Sub 1 exam really soon. And now finally the most important and probably the most neglected one, the free 120. There are two free 120s, the old one and the new one. I don't think you can actually solve the old free 120 from anywhere. But if you can get the PDF of the questions from somewhere, then definitely do the pictures. By that I mean uh, doing the pictorial questions because many of the questions can be asked in the 
actual US Embassy Step 1 exam. The new free 120, in my opinion, was one of the closest to the actual US Embassy Step 1 exam. The questions have a longer stem and they focus more on uh, critical thinking, analyzing, and the actual application of the knowledge. Factual questions were less on it, and that was the same case for the actual US Embassy Step 1 exam. I won't say much about this exam so that you guys can experience it when you give the exam. The only thing that I would say is that uh, you at least give this exam a week before your actual US Assembly Step 1 and that is because so that you know what to expect on the actual US Assembly Step 1 exam and if you are lacking some knowledge in any areas you can work on it. Revise all the image questions especially from the NBMEs. Sometimes they give the exact same uh, question or the exact same image and those will be easy points in the bag and will help you save a lot of time on the test day. I hope you have a guide on how to solve the self-assessments uh, for the US Assembly Step 1 exam and uh, the order in which I took them proves that there is no perfect order to follow and you can stop obsessing over finding a perfect uh, sequence to follow. I made this video because during my time I couldn't find a US Assembly Step 1 self-assessment video in which uh, they had shared their experiences while solving the questions and uh, the assessments. And that's all for this video. If you guys have any questions, you can leave them down below and I'll get to them. And I will see you guys in the next one.